We start our look at the main contenders with the champions. Two Premier League titles in succession represent a flood of success for Manchester United. The second title testimony to the power of motivation of Alex Ferguson, the manager. But even he would admit that this moment of magic by Mark Hughes in the FA Cup semi-final rescued their season. Fleming heads it clear. Sharp lobs it back in again, away by Milligan. But will keep the pressure going into the area again. It goes in! United are off the hook, never write them off. United went on to win the replay against Oldham easily, and after clinching the title, they went in search of a league and cup double. On the day, their class told in the end. Eric Cantona scoring twice from the penalty spot, this his first. Mark Hughes stroked in United's third, and Brian McClare added a flattering fourth. So United prove beyond doubt that they are the best side in England. But what is next for the team many are already calling the team of the 90s? What about the challenges lying ahead in the new season? I think that the challenge will always be, you know, with one of the boys, is to do it again sometime. It may not be next season or whatever, but we're to do it again. Um, but the important thing, I think, as I said about Moan philosophy about our league, is to sit and try and win the league. And that's everyone's objective. When I first came to, down to the club, that was the aim. That was the, the obsession at that time. Um, and having won it twice, we have the experience with the same players going into the season, um, the same campaign, we know all the challenges, uh, and have a go at that. And then hopefully a bonus would be you know, the European Cup. The European Cup remains the dream for today's Manchester United. Their only triumph in this competition was with the legendary team of 1968, built by the late Sir Matt Busby. United already know that they'll face the Spanish champions Barcelona in the Champions League this season. Then it's any two from four clubs who must play in the preliminary round. And United could face Galatasaray from Turkey, who knocked them out of the European Cup last season. Three goals in the first leg at Old Trafford for Galatasaray in a 3-3 draw and United never recovered from it. The first goal by Ari, the second and third from Kubile. The second leg in Turkey ended goalless and the celebrations lasted all night. United will be hoping not to make the same mistake this time around and one factor in their demise against Galatasaray was certainly the exclusion of Mark Hughes. Hughes had a terrific season last time and led the line brilliantly. His all-round play superb and he managed 21 goals in all. Hughes will be an important part of United's team again this season, and so too will Eric Cantona. The flamboyant Frenchman voted Player of the Year by his fellow professionals after a superb season. On this occasion, Cantona a little more talkative than usual. I'm very happy and very proud to get this prize tonight. And I would like to say first, I owe my success to Manchester United, to my manager. Alex Ferguson, my coach, Brian Kidd, all my teammates, the staff, and the fans. After that, I would like to uh, congratulate other people from football in England. Even the player didn't vote for me. <laughs> for, for all the pleasure they give me to play in this magnificent football, English football. Thank you very much to everybody. Cantona's inspiration was there for all to see, and United struggled without his vision. It's Cantona who's going to try it, and what a goal for the Frenchman! There's Hughes, Cantona had to check, now he doesn't, he's onside, Cantona could get the second for United! It's so easy! Cantona's influence is undeniable, but last season Andre Kanchelskis also proved invaluable. 
At the start, it wasn't certain whether he would even be staying at United, but now his name is one of the first on Alex Ferguson's team sheet. Kanchelskis now. Oh, that's an outrageous attempt on goal! Oh, that's brilliant! And then, of course, there is Ryan Giggs. In reality, by his high standard, he didn't have the best of seasons last term, but the skills are unquestionable. He remains a world-class player in the making. And he also attracts attention from the fairer sex, as proved recently in a friendly against Dundalk in Ireland when a young lady stole a kiss. Wherever he goes, he's the centre of attention, and don't forget he's still only 20 years of age. Giggs will be at United for many years to come, but one cornerstone has now left. Brian Robson called it a day after 13 wonderful years at Old Trafford. His attitude and experience will be missed, but United as a team have matured through his guidance. With United, Robson has won every honour in the English game, and Alex Ferguson realises what they are losing. He was a type of player, and there's very few like it, and because of what he'd achieved at a club, you could play him in games that wasn't fit, or he, or he wasn't just the Brian Robson of all, the teams feared him. They feared the name Brian Robson. He was in the team sheet, said, Christ, Robson's playing, you know. So we've got to go over that. We've got to uh, emerge from that era of the Robson thing. In the case of Brian, he felt it was time that he started looking at another uh, career for himself in management, which I always knew was going to happen. And I think he'll do great. Start your day with Happy Day Fruit Juice. Guaranteed 100%. The defence is one area which many experts believe needed new blood, especially as United are going for domestic honours and the European Cup. United spent part of their pre-season preparations in Ireland, where they enjoy a huge following. The city of Dublin was their base for two games against League of Ireland opposition. First, United travelled to Oriel Park, Dundalk, and the locals came out in force, buoyed by the thousands of United fans coming from all over Ireland. But the crowd very nearly witnessed something of a surprise. Dundalk are a side of mainly part-timers who nonetheless have played in Europe before, and they gave the big stars of United a real run for their money. Tony Lachlan firing Dundalk ahead after 15 minutes. And soon after, Dundalk were two up. The United defence court square, no offside, Warren Patmore sliding the ball home. But United were stung into action. A neat move down the right-hand side. Kanchelskis cross, turned over his own line by Kelly. Into the second half now and a chance for United to draw level from the penalty spot. Paul Lynch brought down. But Eric Cantona, unusually wasteful from the spot. The keeper, Eddie Van Boxtel, now a local hero. United did draw level just three minutes later. A terrific strike by Paul Ince. The champions then went up a gear and secured their victory in the final 20 minutes. Mark Hughes steering United ahead after the build-up play involving Paul Ince and Eric Cantona. And then the goal that so many of the crowd had come to see from Ryan Giggs to make the final score, Dundalk 2, Manchester United 4. Two days later, United met Shelburne in Dublin. Again, thousands turned out to see their heroes close at hand. This match turned out a much easier task for United than the game against Dundalk. Paul Ince opening the scoring with a powerful header from Giggs' corner. Eric Cantona made amends for his penalty miss at Dundalk by slotting home this time. 2-0 at half-time. And a third added by Brian McClare. Cantona this time acting as provider. All in all, a highly successful tour with United's players being treated almost like pop idols. So, for the champions, the season's preparations are virtually over. And they once again go into a new campaign as hot favourites. It'll be just as tough this time around, though, 
and perhaps the lure of the European Cup could have a strong effect on their attempts to win their third successive Premier League title.